when their smuggling task goes wrong, two down-on-their-luck friends resort to grave robbing and blackmail to pay the money they owe, lest their imposing boss and his henchmen track them down and kill them. One night, Frank, Muzzy, and Eddie drive down a dark road. Frank asks Eddie to navigate, but the clueless man doesn't know what he's doing, causing the friends to argue. For a moment, Eddie smells something odd, but Frank dismisses this and gets out of the truck to take a leak. Meanwhile, the anxious Eddie checks the vehicle. Frank surmises that Spider gave them the wrong map when Eddie suddenly sees the truck's cargo catch fire. He immediately runs to alert Frank just as the vehicle explodes. That morning, Frank was at work at the used car lot, where he sat by the curb to take a break. His employer berated him for resting, so he put on his mascot head and returned to the side of the road to drum up some customers. Moments later, a truck carrying a man smashing mailboxes with a baseball bat passed by and knocked him down. Later, Eddie, who worked as a grave digger, observed a funeral when Frank appeared. He spotted the wealthiest man in their town, Thomas Harkness, in the service and explained that the deceased was Thomas' late wife. Her corpse was found in a lake days ago, and Eddie teared up at the information. Frank scolded him for getting too emotional with his work, and he admitted to quitting his job at the used car lot since he had bigger dreams. Afterward, Frank told Eddie that their job with Spider would make them millionaires, and they'd go to Las Vegas after getting paid. The pair headed to Spider's nightclub, where Frank spoke to the man alone. Spider chastised him for being late and handed an uneasy Frank his pet venomous Australian barking spider, explaining that people hate arachnids because of their reputation. Scared, Frank shook the spider off to the gang's amusement. Spider was skeptical of Eddie's involvement, but Frank explained that his friend had a truck they could use. Spider sent one of his goons, Tiny, to give Eddie the goods. Spider then ordered Frank to deliver his bootleg cigarettes to Mexico and return tomorrow night, threatening to kill him if he fails. In the present, the pair watch the truck go up in flames and walk away. Frank chastises Eddie and laments about the lost $250,000 worth of merchandise. As Frank questions his luck, Eddie reminds him that surviving the blast was luck. The pair then spot a car driving towards them, and Frank realizes that it's the same woman who got him fired earlier. That morning, Frank assisted the woman in test driving one of their vehicles. When Frank fetched her bag that she left on top of the trunk, she stepped on the gas and drove away. Unfortunately, Frank's boss witnessed the thief's escape. In the present, Spider introduces Tiny to their new bartending twins, Amber and Brandy. After the women leave, Tiny asks his boss if he can make the call, believing the truck has already exploded. However, Spider tells him to wait. The next morning, the pair get to Frank's childhood home, where his mom, Ma Muzzy, is busy stuffing a dead beaver. Frank asks if they can stay with her indefinitely and not tell anyone they're there. Ma initially refuses, but after her son pleads, she relents on the condition that they don't bring women home. In Frank's old bedroom, Eddie sees a picture of Frank and his brother and asks where he is. Annoyed, Frank tells him to stop with the questions, but Eddie persists, so he angrily admits that his brother has passed. Eddie then wonders if he was the one who dug Frank's brother's grave, giving him and Frank a special connection. Appalled at his friend's morbid thinking, Frank insults him. Hurt, Eddie leaves the room and attempts to sneak past Ma but fails. He goes to the kitchen, where Frank joins him to apologize. Eddie also tries to apologize, but Frank reveals his brother still alive but never returned to get him and is currently residing in Las Vegas. He then shows Eddie a newspaper picture of Thomas' late wife, Crystal Harkness, and marvels at her massive diamond necklace. Eddie mentions seeing it on her corpse when he buried her, giving Frank an idea. That night, the pair make their way back to the cemetery. Frank assures Eddie that all they'll do is get her necklace. Hesitantly, Eddie complies and starts shoveling while Frank explains that they'll use the necklace to pay Spider back. Eddie reaches the coffin and steps aside to let Frank open it. However, he finds Crystal's neck bare and asks a reluctant Eddie to hold her corpse while he searches the coffin. Suddenly, Eddie spots Randolph, the night watchman, approaching them. Panicking, Frank quickly hides with a corpse behind the grave marker. Randolph is surprised to see Eddie working so late, so the grave digger lies that he forgot to finish filling the grave earlier. He suggests Randolph have a drink elsewhere to get him to leave, but the watchman decides to drink while watching him work instead. Soon, Randolph falls asleep, so Frank gets the truck and instructs Eddie to put her in the back. Eddie opposes his idea, believing Crystal to be a woman of class. Frustrated, Frank makes him ride with a corpse in the back of the truck. Afterward, they arrive home and place her on the guest room bed. Frank then goes to his room to sleep, leaving Eddie to share the bed with Crystal. Later, Eddie stirs to find Crystal on top of him, but then he wakes
wakes from the dream to Frank's voice. Annoyed, Frank instructs him not to let Ma see the body as he's heading out to make a few phone calls. Frank calls Thomas Harkness' office, but his secretary Kathy drops the call. At the house, while Eddie watches Crystal, he approaches the body and attempts to unbutton her blouse. All of a sudden, Crystal rouses to inform him it's okay to like her. Suddenly, Ma knocks on the door, waking Eddie from his imagination. Ma suspects they're keeping secrets from her and complains about the stench in the room. So Eddie lies that he hasn't taken a shower in days. Frank calls Kathy again and tells her to inform Thomas that they've taken Crystal's corpse. He receives a call from Eddie, informing him of Ma's suspicions. Frustrated, Frank orders him not to let Ma inside the room under any circumstances. He attempts to continue his conversation with Kathy, but she hangs up. At the house, Eddie tries to identify the source of the smell to get rid of it. Frank calls the secretary again, and Thomas finally answers him. Frank informs him that they've abducted his wife and demands a ransom. Thomas doesn't believe him and hangs up, but lingering doubt prompts him to phone Spider. Later, Frank returns to the room to discover Eddie and Crystal clothless. Eddie explains that he washed their clothes, believing them to be the source of the putrid smell. Frank then removes the blanket covering Crystal and is relieved to see her in undergarments. Eddie then checks her backside and sees a spider tattoo, which he's seen before. He remembers Crystal working as a dancer at Spider's bar, but Frank refuses to believe him. Frank then checks Crystal's dress in the dryer when the suspicious Ma sees him. Later, the friends hide the body underneath the bed and visit the bar. Frankie instructs Eddie not to mention Spider's name when Natalie, the bartender, overhears them. She says Spider isn't coming in tonight, so Frank hands Eddie money to keep him entertained with the dancers while he and Natalie converse. Moments later, Candy, a dancer, approaches Eddie and joins him at the table. Meanwhile, Frank asks Natalie about Crystal, upsetting the bartender. He tries to explain why he's asking these questions, but the bartender instructs the bouncer Billy to throw him out. Exasperated, Frank calls the bar's phone and asks to speak to Eddie. Eddie informs him that he spoke to Natalie about Crystal and that she agreed to meet them after her shift. Natalie remembers talking to Crystal about getting out of town, and Crystal told her she'd found a way out using Spider. After her shift, the trio meets at a diner, where Natalie reveals that she thinks Thomas killed Crystal. Frank is in disbelief, but Natalie explains that Spider forced Crystal into working as a dancer, and that Thomas immediately fell in love when he saw her at the bar. Eddie wistfully wishes for a love story like theirs, but Frank quickly rebukes him. However, Natalie comes to his defense, saying Crystal loved her husband because Thomas saw the real her. Frank then makes a rude remark, causing Natalie to walk out. Meanwhile, a man at the counter watches them. Frank follows a tearful Natalie and apologizes. She then shares that Eddie has a friend with information about Crystal. Inside the diner, the man calls Spider to inform him of the pair's whereabouts, so the boss instructs him to follow them. After the call, Thomas arrives and demands that Spider pay him what he owes. Later, the pair drive back to their house, arguing about their treatment of Crystal, when a truck suddenly swerves into their lane. Frank quickly navigates to avoid it, but the man following them rolls his vehicle into a ditch. They then drive to the morgue and meet Herman, Eddie's mortician friend. The two bond over a woman's corpse while a disgusted Frank excuses himself to phone Spider, interrupting the Kingpin's jacuzzi time with Amber and Brandy. Spider orders Frank to return his money and hangs up to call the man who was following them, expecting good news. However, the man informs him that he lost the pair, disgruntling Spider. At the morgue, Herman explains that the autopsy results revealed that Crystal drowned in a pool, not in a lake, confirming that she was murdered. Frank tells Eddie they should focus on their problems, not on Crystal because she is already dead. However, Herman takes Eddie's side because the killer will probably take them out if he finds out they dug up her body. Elsewhere, Spider remembers talking to Crystal about double-crossing Thomas over the bootleg cigarettes. The following day, Frank calls Thomas and orders him to bring $250,000 in exchange for Crystal's body. But Thomas hangs up. Frank returns to the house and tries to cut one of Crystal's fingers to send to her husband as proof. Eddie tries to stop him, but Frank says they need to do it. So Thomas takes their ransom seriously. Eddie compromises, and they remove her toe, prompting him to apologize to Crystal. The next day, Frank sends the evidence to Thomas and demands that he pay lest they cut more of her body parts. At the house, Ma manages to loosen the lock on the bedroom door and is horrified to discover Eddie and Crystal in bed. Eddie tries to escape, but Ma corners and orders him to get the woman out of the house. Panicked, Eddie grabs her stuffed beaver and accidentally knocks her down the stairs. He then drags her unconscious body into the bathtub, making it look like an accident. Meanwhile, Frank meets Natalie to ask her for a 
favor before handing her a note. As Eddie watches the paramedics assist Ma out of the house, he lies that she slipped in the tub and insists on staying to wait for his brother, Frank. That night, Eddie visits Crystal outside, where he's propped her up as though she's chopping wood. He then tearfully apologizes for allowing Ma to call her demeaning words earlier. Concurrently, Frank watches from the roof and sees Thomas, Spider, and his gang enter the bar. Annoyed that Eddie isn't answering his calls, Frank proceeds with his plan. He phones Thomas and instructs him to leave the bag of money in the bathroom window. After Thomas confirms he's done as he's told, Frank grabs the bag from outside and flees. However, Tiny spots him and runs after him. Frank evades Tiny by hiding in a trash can. Then Natalie picks him up seconds later. At the house, Spider and Tiny corner Eddie at gunpoint and ask him where Frank is. Suddenly, a gunshot rings out, and Eddie falls to the floor. Spider instructs Tiny to investigate, and the other lackey explains he shot the woman with an axe in the backyard, oblivious that it's actually Crystal's propped up corpse. Meanwhile, Spider douses Eddie with water to wake him up, as he'd passed out from the fear of getting shot earlier. Spider then orders his men to take Eddie back with them. Later, Frank and Natalie arrive at the house, where she finds a note instructing Frank to call Spider. Frank then phones Spider and learns that they have Eddie. To save him, Frank tells Spider that they have the money and to meet him at the bar. As he cuts the call, Frank sees Crystal from the kitchen window and rushes outside. Natalie follows and is horrified to find her friend's corpse. Frank explains that they only dug her up to retrieve the necklace. Natalie admits that on the night Crystal died, she was last seen with Spider, and that her husband left the bar in a jealous fit hours prior. Based on her statement, Frank deduces that Spider is actually Crystal's murderer. Meanwhile, Spider recalls Crystal wanting half of his share of their bootleg earnings, implying he'd be getting more than they initially planned. In his rage, he drowned her in the jacuzzi. Later, Natalie drives Frank to the bar, where he entrusts her with the money and instructs her to hide. Outside the bar, Tiny keeps watch on a tied-up Eddie in his truck when the bound man asks him to remove the tape over his mouth so he can drink from his flask. Tiny obliges, and as they share the drink, the goon admits that Spider will likely kill both Frank and Eddie. The intoxicated man also reveals that they never gave the friends the cigarettes. Spider and Thomas plan to pretend that the cigarettes were stolen so the latter would file an insurance claim. They would then split the money and sell the supposedly missing supplies, thus doubling their profits. However, Spider switched the supplies with old phone books so Thomas would think that the cigarettes were actually destroyed. The boss would then take half of the insurance money and sell the cigarettes on his own. Meanwhile, Frank enters the bar, but when he sees that Spider doesn't have Eddie, he threatens to give his dancers the money until the boss hands over his friend. Frustrated, Spider calls Tiny and instructs him to bring Eddie inside. When Tiny takes out a knife, Eddie thinks he's about to get stabbed, but to his surprise, Tiny cuts his ropes. Tiny then asks if he's ever kissed a man, eliciting an awkward laugh between them. The two men enter the bar, and Candy approaches. To keep him out of trouble, Frank instructs her to give Eddie a private dance and hands her a wad of cash. However, Tiny is reluctant to let Eddie go but eventually relents on Spider's insistence. Frank, Spider, and Tiny then head to the truck, where Frank claims to have hidden the money in Spider's house. At the bar, Candy tries to kiss Eddie, but he stops her, saying he has to take care of someone first. The trio arrives at Spider's house, where Spider instructs his lackey to find the twins. He then follows Frank to the back of the house, where they see Crystal's body in the jacuzzi. Spider laughs, believing it to be a joke. Thomas appears, thinking that the gang boss was blackmailing him with his wife's body when he was responsible for her death. Frank then points Thomas to a satchel with half the money, claiming he'll get the rest once he knows Eddie's safe. Tiny returns and informs Spider that the twins have escaped with Natalie and are on their way to the cops. Realizing that Frank planned this, Spider reveals that Crystal was the mastermind behind their cigarette scam, but she was cheating her husband out of it, so he technically saved Thomas. He would have gotten away with it if Frank hadn't dug her up. He then shoots Frank, prompting Thomas to fire at Spider. Tiny grabs his boss gun and shoots Thomas. But the man fires back, and the ricocheting bullet hits Tiny's head. Spider gets up and sees that Frank survived because his flask stopped the bullet. In his dying moments, Spider points his gun at Frank but eventually succumbs to his injury. Days later, they rebury Crystal, and Eddie and Candy share a kiss by her grave. Frank and Ma watch from a distance, glad that Eddie's finally with a woman who has a pulse. Soon, Frank, Eddie, and Candy drive to Las Vegas. When the gravedigger asks about Natalie's whereabouts, Frank Frank explains that Natalie is enjoying life with the twins on a tropical beach. Later, Frank spots the car thief who got him 
fired by the side of the road. So he asks if she needs help with her vehicle. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.